thank the Lord for friends and home, for mercy sure and sweet. But I would praise him for his grace, prayer I would repeat. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and free. Some thank him for the flowers that grow, some for the stars that shine. My heart is filled with joy and praise because I know he is mine. I trust in him from day to day. I prove his saving grace. I sing the song of praise to him till I see his face. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to The Doctor Is In on the ICN Impact Network. I am your host, Dr. Rick Sampson, Biblical Health Coach, President and Founder of Sanctification Deliverance International Ministries, where we talk about health, healing, and wellness from a biblical and medical perspective. If you would like to know more about this ministry and would like to support this program with your donations, you can go to our website at thehealthminister.org or send it to Sanctification Deliverance Ministries, P.O. Box 1082, Norristown, PA, 19404. And our email address is sanctificationministry59 at gmail.com. On this program, you will hear sermons about the ministry of health, healing, and wellness as told in the Bible and continuing into the 21st century. So welcome again to The Doctor Is In. I always pray that God use me to encourage and offer hope to people with difficulties in building healthy eating habits or having balanced nutrition, to lift the heavy burden of the challenges of nutrition and fitness in people's lives, and that they may be truly fit for God's call of their lives and to be used for His purposes and to bring people closer to Him and His truth. What we eat, ladies and gentlemen, is a big part of our lives, both for enjoyment and in order that our bodies would be strong for serving God and others. The book of Ecclesiastes chapter 5 verse 18 says, Then I realized that it is good and proper for a man to eat and drink and to find satisfaction in his toilsome labor under the sun during a few days of life God has given him, for this is his lot. When our bodies are healthier and refreshed, we are more equipped and able to carry out his purposes for our lives. In other words, we are more able to say yes to what God calls us to do when our bodies are nourished, just as Abraham was eager to help provide sustenance and service for the angelic visitors that came to his house. He said to them, let me get you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant. Genesis chapter 18, verse 5. In today's fast-paced life, we often find ourselves drawn to drive through coffee houses, processed packaged foods, and quick microwavable dinners where some people are starving from lack of food both around the world and even in the United States. Many Americans right here are suffering from the effects of eating and drinking things that break down their health rather than build it up. TV advertisements, recommendations from friends and peer pressure can cause our minds to make poor food choices. But many of us know what is best for our bodies like fruit, vegetables, nuts, beans, seeds, legumes, and whole grains God gave us in abundance to eat. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 29 to 30, God said, Behold, I give you every seed bearing plant on the face of the whole earth, and every tree that has fruit that has seed in it, they will be yours for food. He said, I give every green plant for food. These, ladies and gentlemen, are the foundation of our best nutrition and health. God also gave us fish and animals. Upon every creature that moves along in the ground and upon all of the fish of the sea, 
God said they are given into your hands. So, everything that lives and moves will be food for you. Just as I gave you the green plants, I now give you everything. Genesis chapter 9, verses 2 to 3. Now, let me say that it was not until after Adam fell from grace that God allowed man to eat anything that lives and moves. This was because, ladies and gentlemen, the earth was so cursed that producing fruits and vegetables for protein would be difficult. So, what God did was he allowed man to eat meat as an additional protein source in order to survive. Some people have chosen today a vegetarian diet and receive uh, all nourishment from plant, a plant-based diet as Daniel uh, did to honor Elohim when he was staying uh, in Babylon with King Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, Daniel, the Bible said, refused to eat the king's meat that honored the king and instead he ate vegetables and water. And that's the book of Daniel, the first chapter. This shows us that his faith, his faith in Elohim affected his diet, which was separate from what the world was doing. Now, according to uh, the Jewish Levitical dietary laws, and uh, also it was uh, biologically healthier uh, for him. But those were the two reasons that Daniel did this and the Jewish community of biblical times. For each healthy option, ladies and gentlemen, there are at least twice as many poor food choices competing for our attention. Now, many of these options become more and more temptations than healthy food. They may be what our taste buds crave, what our habits have taught us to consume, or what time constraints force us to choose. Our food cravings can be a, a quick energy boost for sweets or salt-laden fried foods. Uh, uh, these uh, foods and drink, uh, though they have a lot of flavor, can lead us or rather leave us feeling a lethargic and weigh us down and give us a temporary jolt of energy and then uh, uh, leave us in a crash that often leads to an endless cycle of needing another jolt of energy to keep up this, the stamina. Medical research confirms a relationship between nutrition and disease prevention and optimal health. These findings, in a way, confirm God's call to care for our temples, these bodies, and make better choices in what we eat. Do you not know the Bible says that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, which is in you, whom you have received from God? You, ladies and gentlemen, you are not your own. That's right. You don't even belong to yourself. Why? Because the Bible says that you are bought with a price. Somebody paid for you. Somebody bought you. Therefore, honor God with what? Your body. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 to 20. So, if you want to recall, Claim your health and vitality and take back your life and empower yourself in important biblical principles that would address prevalent spiritual factors that have a positive effect on your mental, emotional, and physical health, then I want you to join me right here every Sunday night at 8 p.m. on The Doctor Is In. And now, here's a note from your doctor. High cholesterol is often caused by eating fatty foods or being overweight. It occurs when you have too much of a fatty substance called cholesterol in your blood. It does not tend to cause symptoms, so you can only find out if you got it by getting a blood test from your doctor. Now, anyone can get high cholesterol, and it can be caused by many different things, but there are some things you can do to help. Many people can lower their cholesterol by eating healthy and making lifestyle changes. We need 
the good cholesterol to stay healthy, but there are some forms of cholesterol which are considered bad for us. There's good cholesterol and there's bad cholesterol. Now, Alina Health notes that there are several foods that may improve your cholesterol level, though there are also some foods which can be bad for your cholesterol. They said eat no more, say for instance, two egg yolks a day. Use egg substitute or egg whites if you are eating more than say eight egg yolks a week. Generally speaking, it should be fine for most people to eat eggs as uh, the cholesterol in eggs does not have a significant effect on blood cholesterol. So for most people, eating eggs won't have a significant effect on your blood cholesterol and they're also good for you to eat. The organization suggests that it is much more important to limit the amount of saturated fat you eat. Because too much, what, saturated fat can raise the cholesterol in your blood. You don't want that. So most people can eat eggs as long as they are part of a healthy diet that is low in saturated fat. If you have high blood cholesterol, you should limit the amount of cholesterol you eat to about, say, two eggs per week. But speak to your doctor or dietitian about what is best for you. The British Dietetic Association says, compare labels and choose foods with labels on them for saturated foods. Foods are high in saturated fat if they contain more than 5 grams of saturated fat per 100 grams. Food containing 1.5 gram or less per 100 gram are low in saturated fat. Nonetheless, some healthy foods that are high in fat, like fish, nuts, oils, are okay. Why? Because they contain more of the healthy unsaturated fat. According to the National Health Service, eating plenty of fiber helps lower your risk of heart disease and can help lower your cholesterol. It has been suggested that adults should aim for at least 30 grams of fiber per day. All right? Good sources of fiber, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen include wholemeal bread, potatoes with the skin on it, and oats and barley. Reducing the amount of fat in your diet can also help reduce your risk of heart disease. Remember that, ladies and gentlemen. You might need medicine to lower your cholesterol if your cholesterol level has not gone down after changing your diet and lifestyle. All right? You may also need medicine if you're at a high risk of having a heart attack or a stroke, according to the National Health Service. Also, because high cholesterol levels do not cause or uh, produce symptoms, symptoms, people are also being urged to get their cholesterol checked. All right? You don't see or feel those symptoms, but there's something going on there. People who are over 40 can get a checkup which helps to spot early signs of problems like heart disease and diabetes. But everyone, ladies and gentlemen, can get or have high cholesterol even if you are young, slim, eat well, and exercise. You can still get it. That's why you got to keep getting yourself checked out. And that's because high cholesterol can be caused by different things. It can be caused by an unhealthy lifestyle and it can also be genetic. And that is the note from your doctor. The Word of God tonight is found again in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. And it says, And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. To be healthy, ladies and gentlemen, calls for a balance in all that we do. 
and I spoke on this last week and I'm going to elaborate on it again. Exercise, exercise is absolutely necessary for good health and so is rest and relaxation. Let us look at some of the organs in our bodies that need physical rest. Number one, your heart is a good example. Every minute your heart beats about 70 times. Each uh, contraction of the heart lasts only about four tenths of a second. The remaining six tenths of the second, your heart is resting. Did you know that? So actually, your heart should be resting more than it's working if it's in good condition. If you have, say, for example, a rapid pulse, you should uh, get started on the exercise program and you will find that your heart will slow down after a few weeks. It will get more rest and it will last longer. Our muscles, I talked about that last week, work hard and they need rest. If they are forced and continue working without proper periods of rest, the muscles become tired out and stop functioning until given proper time to rest and to recuperate. Your stomach needs periods of rest. After you eat all that food, after you eat that meal, it works hard for you in the digestive process. It should have a chance to rest before the next meal, all right? Did you know that you make it impossible for your stomach to get the rest it needs when you eat between meals? That's right. Now, here's a tip for some of you students in school. Would you like to know how to get better grades? Research shows that students who study every spare minute are fatigued just like a factory worker on a 75 hour work week schedule. They do not do so well. If you sit up late and study until you cannot hold your eyes open any longer, what's gonna happen? Your grades, they're gonna go down, they're not gonna improve. But if you would try a program uh, which includes exercise, daily exercise, you will find that your, your, your mind is more sharper and clearer and your grade to get better. So get exercise. Generally speaking, adults should have at least seven to eight hours of sleep each night. That's right, seven to eight hours of sleep. This should be done in a comfortable and well-ventilated place as possible. Rest is a very important factor in recovering from illness and uh, staying well, ladies and gentlemen. Sleep brought on by taking pills is not beneficial as natural, natural sleep. You see, the pills are simply artificial depressants, right? Sleep should be well earned by balanced living. And may I add, this includes a clear conscience and trust in God. Sleep should certainly not have a dependence on prescription pills. So, don't stay up late and rob your body of the rest it needs. It has also been scientifically proven that the sleep you get before midnight does more good than sleep you get after the hours of midnight. Loss of sleep it's hard to make up, ladies and gentlemen, because research shows that it takes from one to three weeks to make up for the loss of efficiency resulting from missing one night of sleep. Just one night. But sleep is only one means of relaxation. If your day is spent in the office uh, sitting, or as a student studying, you will find good relaxation in some sort of activity that, that does not call for mental exertion. On the other hand, if you have been busy or, or running about the whole day, you can find relaxation in just sitting down, reading a book or magazine, or doing something that is quiet. Whatever you do, do not let yourself become a couch potato. Get off that chair, get out of that bed and exercise. 
as pressure mounts and as tensions build in the world that we live in and all around us, we sometimes find ourselves being affected by it, right? If at times you find it hard to relax because you feel stressed out and tired and beat down, here are some things that you can do to help yourself. First of all, do this simple exercise. Ball your fist up as tight as you can and hold it. Now, let it go all of a sudden. Hold it up tight and then let it go. You can feel the tension between your hands, your arms, and your shoulders being released. Now do it again. Second, stretch your legs out in front of you. Bend your feet and toes downward, right? Go as far as you can. Now let go. Now push your heels down as far as you can. Now relax. More tension starts to disappear. Here's another one. You can close your eyes, squeeze them real tight, now let go. The tension starts to disappear. Each of these exercises, relaxing exercises, should be done as often as you can. The Lord said to his disciples in the book of Mark chapter 6 verse 31, Come ye apart and rest a while. To get the most out of life, ladies and gentlemen, we must learn to live with a balanced program of activity and rest, of rest and activity. God made our bodies in such a way that work and exercise, rest and relaxation are all necessary for maximum efficiency. You see, God wants you to be alive and well for him and the Christian life is supposed to be a balanced life. Jesus says to each one of us, come unto me all ye that labor, that work, that toil, and are heavy laden. And he said, what else? I will give you rest. You see, there cannot be any joy and happiness without resting. And if we come to the Lord for rest, he will give us relief from our burdens. There are so many, many problems confronting us every day. Sometimes not being able to find a way out of these difficult problems and situations of life, many have committed suicide. They become helpless, hopeless. They try in vain to find answers to the difficulties, problems of life. But Jesus says that he has water which would truly satisfy. Listen to what he says. But whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. St. John chapter 4 verse 14. He also has not just water but bread. Bread of life to satisfy our hunger. He says in this connection, I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. St. John chapter 6, verse 51. For those burdened with sin, the Lord says, come now. Though your sins be scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be like crimson, they shall be as wool. Isaiah chapter 1, verse 18. To the sorrowing and worried ones, he says, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world give, but as I give unto you. He said, Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. St. John chapter 14, verse 27. During the three and a half years of Jesus' ministry, in this world Jesus fulfilled all that he professed. On one occasion, he fed 5,000 people with just five loaves of bread and two fish. He confronted those that wept. He said to them, weep not. He healed all kinds of sicknesses. He even raised the dead. At one time, he stopped a funeral profession. That's right, a funeral that was in process. He stopped it and he went to the dead who was the only son of a widow and he raised him to life. He didn't even touch the body. He touched the casket. 
and the child came to life. To each one of us, Jesus brings the assurance of life, life abundant and life eternal. He that has the Son has life, and he that has not the Son of God has not life. 1 John 5 and 12. Now, the question comes, how can we come to him for rest, for water, and for that living bread, and for everlasting life? The answer is found in the Bible itself. This is what he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come unto him, and I will sup with him, and he with me. Revelations 3 and 20. So the first step to this, that bread, that water, that rest, the first step is to hear him. When we hear him, we can at once realize our sinfulness and our need for his pardoning. We come to him as we are. We bring our unclean, defiled hearts to him just as we are. We give ourselves to Jesus and he cleanses us. He gives us a new heart in place of a stony heart. We are sorry for having disobeyed him, which was the cause of his crucifixion. We ask for forgiveness of all our sins. And we need to specify every sin and seek his pardon. He says, he that cometh to me, I will in no wise cast out. St. John chapter 6, verse 37. I want you to know, ladies and gentlemen, there is joy in heaven when one sinner repents and comes to him. He has compassion on us like a father when his wayward child returns to him. After we have asked the Lord for forgiveness, we should believe that we are forgiven. That's right. He forgives, believe you are forgiven. We are justified by faith in him. We stand before God as if we have never sinned. From this point, we should live a new life. We should be a new people. The Bible says, let him that stole steal no more. If we told lies in the past, now we only should be telling the truth. If, see, we will not smoke or should not smoke or drink or murder or worship idols or commit suicide or commit adultery. We will not cheat on anyone. We will not use curse words. We will be clean in and out because he has forgiven us and given us a new life. So the third step is to be what? Converted. Change, a complete change. Top to bottom, bottom to top, inside out. And then Become children of God. We take the name Christian or follower of Christ. This can be done through baptism, being baptized. Then Jesus, after that baptized initiation, he becomes our Savior and our Redeemer. He becomes our constant companion in times of need. He's always with us. He lifts us when we fall. He strengthens us so we will not fall. The creator of heaven, Elohim, the creator of heaven and earth is with us to help us. You could be a murderer listening to me tonight. You could be a thief listening to me tonight. But all of your sins are forgiven the moment you accept Jesus Christ as your personal savior. This is very easy to do, ladies and gentlemen, but many will not do it because the Bible says men love darkness rather than light. Once we have sinned, there is nothing we can do of ourselves to atone for our sin. Hear me clearly. There's no pilgrimage. There is no penance. It's of no avail. We are doomed. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Death is the only verdict. And so Jesus comes along and he pays the penalty for our sin by his precious blood. And because he does that, he sets us free. So salvation is the gift of God through Jesus Christ our Lord. We cannot earn salvation. We cannot buy salvation. It is a gift 
from God. We have to accept the gift by faith. Friend, brothers and sisters, are you burdened tonight? Are you worried? Are you concerned? Is your soul thirsty and hungry for that spiritual bread and water? Jesus can be truly yours. He invites you tonight, right now, where you are, sitting on that sofa, on that chair. He's inviting you to accept him tonight. Will you do it? He's knocking at the door of your heart. The Bible tells us we are to open up and let him in. And while you can hear his pleading voice, his calling you, the Bible says, harden not your heart. He will bring joy and gladness, peace and life everlasting into your life. I want you to know that he's coming soon. So you need to accept him now if you do not know him. The choice is yours. You do not have to die in your sins. You don't have to be lost for all eternity. He has made all provisions for your salvation. If you are lost, it will because, because of your own choice. God bless you tonight, brothers and sisters, that when Jesus comes, you and I will be ready to meet him. The Bible said that faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen, Hebrews 11 and 1. For he that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hebrews 11 and 6. This is Dr. Rick Sampson signing off tonight. Until we meet again next Sunday at 8 p.m. On The Doctor's In, right here on the ICN Impact Network. May you prosper and be in good health.